Hey there, I'm Greg Tatum, and I do some creative coding. And so I'm going to do a little dive into one of my pieces that I've done recently. Um, and I'm doing a series of sessions for WebGL. I'm using a framework called Regal, which is kind of a declarative way to um, set up WebGL. And I'm just going to do a little dive through my code. And so where I start is in this index file. And you can see here I'm loading up a texture. And I have a frame loop that I go through. And I clear the frame, set up the scene, and I manage and draw my figures, and I draw the background. And I'll dive into what each of those things is doing. So manage and draw figures is kind of the interesting thing here. So if I go into figure manager, you can see I have this main function called create draw figures, which gets passed in regal and draw a mask body. And in my index, let's go back there. Oh, it's called draw mass body, which is a little bit of a bad name. But draw figure is this figure function right here, which will draw my figure. Uh, so let's go into back into manage the figure manager. And what I do is I create uh, some poses. I update the head model, and or I create a function to update the head model. And then I have a list of mass drawing calls. So let's look at these poses. So create poses here is a list of objects. And all these objects declare how all these various functions, all these various antlers guys are, are created. So let's play around with that just a little bit. So this first one's the default antler dude. So you can see if I change this, so I can do Let's call, let's find an interesting one, antler scale. So antler scale I've set to two, so let's set it to one here and save. So this takes a second and you can see the scale of the antlers, this little dude right here is smaller based on that property. So I can go through and create this manifest of different poses and where they go and have it all digested based on my program. So let's collapse down create poses. And what I have in this manager is I say for each of those poses, I take that pose, um, I update the head model, um, which just, um, I believe that just updates some matrices of how it gets transformed. And then I take my mat cap texture, which I've loaded in with my assets, and I'm passing them in here in my draw call. And then I draw my individual masks and draw my mask body. So these are the two functions to actually do the work to draw, and they take in the pose right here. Uh, so let's see here. At some point, I actually do generate these. Let's, let me go back. So I have this poses map. Oh yeah, here we go. Create draw mask. So this is where my geometry gets uh, generated. So I think, oh wait, I'm confused. So now it gets generated in mask mess, which I don't have time to figure out how that got fed in. But um, so you see here, I have my basic numbers of how things get generated. Um, and these are arbitrary values that I build up over time. And I create a config object, and I take a config in, and then update it based on those values. Um, and what you're going to see here is my I start by creating a box, which is a list of quads, which are, um, instead of triangles, which are three positions, I have quads, which are all four positions, which is a lot easier to uh, work with. So uh, let's do some magic here and return my mesh. So when I save, um, what you're going to see are these creepy head box guys. Um, and then if I go down, split loop, eventually, under create eye holes, which is a wonderful function name, uh, you see some eyes, uh, bend mask, shear mask. So you see I'm slowly adjusting the geometry and the topology of these things. Um, extrude mouth, this is a creepy, creepy mouth that gets made. And then generate both antlers. And 
finally subdivide, which that's the thing that takes a while to do. Um, so it makes that all those smooth with the Catmull Clark subdivision. And then finally you return it, and this one is just a little bit of noise, which I didn't bother encapsulating in a function, which I probably should have, but it's a session, so I don't always do everything I want. Now, generate both antlers. Uh, this one is interesting to look at, so let's go through this. So let's return, I guess this doesn't return anything when I do it, but... So you can see when I start here, oh good, we get the subdivision, so you can see like kind of the smooth step without the antlers. Um, and I define a left one and right one, and I take my cell and square it, and then extrude off of that, and then I create the antler from that extruded cell. So let's take this create antler and look at what it's doing. So create antler, I take my config right here, which you see, and I destructure all of the different properties in there that I care about. And this I build up over time, it's arbitrary, it's just I wanted to configure the different magic numbers throughout everything. Then I go down and then I create antler sections. So I start with a base section and then I go in a loop for I to the antler depth and I modify the radius and branch. So basically I'm shrinking this, the radius here every time. I'm shrinking the length a little bit. I'm tweaking which direction it's going in. Um, so that way it, it curves over time. Now create antler section. I run through multiple times with those parameters and they change over time. Um, so let me go back here, undo that, and then create antler. This will be a fun function to mess with real quick. So this one returns a mesh. So let's go do that, return a mesh. And again, if I don't do any work here, I have <laughs> these little things, little stubs, those little nubbins. Um, and here, let's just do this first, create antler section. You can see that one section is created. And then as I go through, let's do um, one step, two steps, three steps, and so on. And you see how those are built up. So let's look at create antler section and dive into this one a little bit. So I have this huge list of parameters, which again starts out probably pretty reasonably, it grows over time. And I, I create an extrusion, so I take the, the base, base piece and I extrude out. Um, and here I get my branch cells. Um, so basically I extrude again with mesh, tip cell, um, so I guess what I'm doing here is I'm extruding it out multiple times, and then out of all those cells I've created, so I've created a stack. So I do a small one, then um, another one, and another one. So I have this middle section, and so I have this thing that wraps around with the middle section, and I pick here with this modulo math thing with the branch cells, I pick one of these four along the sides, and out of those I pick, I extrude it out, and then um, I think this one I do actually rotate at some point. So those, that's how I handle the, um, all the kind of branching things that you're seeing here. So we get back to the finished piece. Uh, and with a little bit of time I have left, let's look at the body, because that's interesting. So the figure is what I'm calling that. Um, and originally I called it draw, ma I called it mask body, and I got, kept on getting confused, so I renamed it a figure, but it's still called draw, draw mask body occasionally. Um, and let's go to my figure manager and not draw the masks. So I'll comment out the call to draw the masks. Um, now you see I have these creepy little, I keep on saying creepy because this thing kind of creeped me out, uh, these little bodies floating in the air. Um, so morphed, basically I take the body position that I generated and I mix, I create a model mix, which mixes, 
let's see here. Okay, so based on the height of position y is how much I mix between the base model, ma base matrix that transforms it, and my thing that moves the head around. So basically the, the body stays still and then the head moves, and then all the geometry between, just depending on where it is, is if it moves or not. And that's what this, I, I mix them together here. And then here is, I have to transform my normal, um, and I still have to mix that same way I mixed before, but these, the normal matrices are different from the normal model matrices, so I have to do that separately. Um, and then apply my matrix trans transformations and then do some kind of depth calculation here. And then finally in my fragment shader, which draws the colors, um, I determine a brightness. And this is that kind of velvet look that it has. So brightness, let's set it to zero. Let's see what happens. So zero, you see like that velvety look goes away. Um, and what I do is I take the dot product, which is between negative one and one, and based on the normal. So if, if the two normals are in the same direction, the value is going to be one. Um, if it's here, it's going to be zero. If it's pointing down below opposite, it's going to be negative one. So what I care about is, is if it's near, if my, if my light is near the way my normal is pointing. So brightness, um, what I'm doing is I'm saying this normal is pointing uh, one. So I believe that's pointing towards the camera. Um, I take the brightness, and I subtract, yeah, I subtract one minus that brightness. Um, so if I save this again, and let's change this vector to point. Um, up instead, so it's the up direction or down direction. And then, oh, I guess, you know, whatever. Oh, it's one minus, that's why. Um, and then my final tweak for this, whoops, let's do that. My final tweak of this value was to just um, make it more abrupt. So if I take the brightness, which is a value between zero and one, and multiply it by itself, it's much more abrupt at the edges. So I did that to tweak it. And then I guess my color, the deeper it is, you can see down at the base, it gets to be a little bit more yellow. Um, yeah, so that's a quick run, run through of how this one ended up working out, and hopefully I'll do some more of these.